Financial terms have apparently been agreed for a third fight between Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez. I'm not particularly excited about this third fight, about completing this trilogy. I feel we've just got to get it out of our system. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Now, Canelo is also scheduled to be fighting Billy Joe Saunders in June. If the coronavirus derails that fight, then hopefully we can just jump straight into that third fight with the Kazakh. That is what I have read. Now, generally, I love trilogies in boxing. They're one of the savoury delights, one of the great things about the sport's history. There's just so many names associated with trilogies. For me, in my era, really, the Barrera Morales trilogy was just absolutely sensational. That first fight was as good as anything as I've ever seen. Probably the best 12-round fight I've ever seen. But the trilogy really told a story. And that's what I love about trilogies. You had the ferocious first one. You had the more tactical and considered sequel. And then you had the decider which was a great blend of fire and ice, tactics and passion. This third fight, the prospect of it, between Canelo, a 30-year-old Canelo he'll be, and a 38-year-old Golovkin, it doesn't really whet the appetite. Not when you see how the first two fights have gone. Fights in which some people feel Golovkin should have got both decisions, but he never really looked spectacular in the process. Certainly in that first fight, the way Golovkin had been pulverizing people, people hoped to see Golovkin just really put it on Canelo and bust him up for a stoppage win. It didn't happen. And then in that second fight, even if you still feel Golovkin won, it was certainly closer, but Canelo stood right in front of him, which was considered suicide a couple of years earlier. The fact Golovkin is going to be older, the fact he picks up those injuries so easily these days. Again, where is the real excitement in this one? If you look at this from a certain angle, you can maybe say they're one apiece. If you give the first one, which was officially a draw, you give it to Golovkin and you go, okay, under the faintest wind, the decision in the sequel goes to Canelo. Maybe it's one apiece. And this is where all the, the whole purpose of it lies now in this third fight. I think a lot of Golovkin fans now will be hoping and praying that somehow an older Golovkin can turn a decision because a knockout seems very unlikely right now. Again, I go back to what I said previously. It feels like we just need to get this out of our system. And some people with Golovkin's age, with the fact that he's going to be a, a deserved underdog in this third fight if it goes ahead, some people will be looking at it as like a retirement package for him because he is going to get paid handsomely. But the earlier he has this one, the better for him and I feel his failing physical powers. If we look at what is considered probably the greatest ever rubber match, the third fight between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, Thomas Hauser who wrote a famous biography on Muhammad Ali in 1990, I think The Life and Times. He spoke eloquently about the thriller in Manila, about how it was a fight between two diminished forces. But because the downward trajectories perfectly interwove, you still had that great raw chemistry, even though there wasn't quite the splendor and the skill of the first fight. For me, I've never really felt that Canelo and Golovkin had that great, great chemistry to begin with. Now, I do feel a little bit for Golovkin because he should have got his chance earlier. He should have been allowed to fight Sergio Martinez years ago, knocked him out of the picture, knocked Miguel Cotto away if he had the balls to step up and try and take the title off him. And then a title defense should have taken place against Canelo Alvarez about 2015. Start the trilogy earlier, both closer to their primes, more compelling, more rewarding for everybody. This third fight now, I'm looking at it. A lot of people are thinking it's going to be one-sided. 
I just hope it's not too one-sided and too ugly for the once fearsome Golovkin.